Good morning. Welcome back to Projects with Everyday Dave. It's a beautiful, sunny, cold winter morning. And today I want to talk about this combiner box. I had a lot of people leave comments in the description saying that using wire nuts wasn't a good choice. And they've shown some various situations where there have been fires because there was arcing in the wire nuts. After a little bit of research, I think I've found an even better solution. So I'm going to show you that today. We'll build a new box and we'll get it installed. So let's get to it. I was surprised how many people complained about me using wire nuts to connect my wires between my array and the house. And since I have to redo my box anyway, I thought I would research the best way to connect the wires. And after digging into it quite a bit, there are a lot of people using various lug style connectors. And I ran across this particular one that I really liked and wanted to try out. Full disclosure, I contacted International Connector and they sent me these parts to evaluate. But I have to say, I'm really impressed with them. So it has a really robust solution for grabbing the wire. But I'm gonna try out several sizes of wire in these units and make sure that it's going to hold on like I want it to because wire nuts, I have to say, are pretty secure. And I'm not confident that these will actually be able to hold as tight as wire nuts can. But we're gonna give it a shot. Let's try out some wires. So this is the DK10N and it can handle up to a six gauge stranded wire. So I've got one of those here to try. I've already stripped the end of it. We'll stick it in this terminal block, tighten it down. And then try and remove it. Ah. <clears throat> That's, that's pretty amazing. That was a lot tighter than I thought. Let me try one of the, here's a solid wire, six gauge. Now it seems like just pulling straight on it, it isn't gonna come out of there. But how about a little wiggling? If I wiggle and pull on it for a minute, maybe I can get it to come out. But maybe not. Clearly I can't pull this thing out by hand and I want to know how much force I'm putting on it. So I have this push-pull gauge that can go a little over 100 pounds and we'll see how much force it actually takes to pull a wire out of this Dinkle connector versus one of these wire nuts. So let's give it a shot. Okay, I'll use the same high quality silicone filled wire nut that I used on my box originally and the 10 gauge wire that comes from the combiner box to the house and put that on as securely as I possibly can and then we'll pull it apart and see what happens. Mm, there we go. All right, let's see what it takes to pull this apart. 16, 27 pounds. I removed one of the connectors off the DIN rail and I'll take a 10 gauge wire and securely clamp it in the connector and then we'll secure that to the table with a C-clamp and pull on it with the pull gauge and see how much force we can get. 15, 27, 28, oh. Which one's coming apart? Got up to 30, 50, 60, wow, 90, whoo! It's over 100 pounds, which is about the max of this device, and I still can't pull it apart. Okay, I disassembled one of these connectors so you can see how it's able to grip those wires so tightly. You can see the top plate has little grooves in it that embed in the copper wire and just crush it, allowing it to grip incredibly tight. And then the bottom side connector also has little grooves in it that compresses from the other side as the screw tightens. So together with the force of the screw crushing the bottom and top surface together and smashing the copper wire with those grooves, that's how it's able to hold on so incredibly tight. But how about tiny wire. So here's the minimum size, 22 gauge, and this is the smallest block, the DK4N. So let's see how well it holds tiny little wires. Well, it's definitely very tight. <clears throat> okay, I'm able to get it out, but it took quite a bit of force, more than 20 pounds of force to pull that out of there. There are three different sizes I have represented here. The designator for them is DK. So this is DK4N, DK6N, DK10N, and it goes all the way up to DK35N. 
but these are the size ones that make sense for most solar installations. This is good for 600 volts and 30 amps, and it does wire sizes from 22 gauge all the way up to 10 gauge, um, both stranded and solid. This is good for 600 volts, 50 amps, wire sizes from 20 gauge all the way to 8 gauge. And then this one is good for 600 volts and 60 amps, and it's good for wire sizes from 20 gauge all the way to 6 gauge. Now, I contacted International Connector and I talked to Clayton, and he said that he recommends using one size up from your largest wire. So if the largest wire in your system is 10 gauge, even though this says it can handle 10 gauge, he would recommend that you go on up to the D6N size. That's because it is rated for 10 gauge, but that's its absolute maximum. So it's a little more convenient for managing if you have a little bit oversized. The other cool thing about these is they have jumper connectors that you can get with them. And it allows you to connect in pairs or even the whole line together so that you can have several strings coming in on one side with one output on the other. So it works great as a very simple, tight combiner. In my case, I'm just going to be having uh, one in, one out because I have two strings run all the way to the inverter. So we don't need to use these jumpers. The other neat thing that Clayton sent me were these labels. These say L1 through L10, and I have some for S1 through S10, so I can label string one, string two, string three, and line one, line two, line three coming out so that I can always keep track of which string is which. So that's a pretty cool feature. The other thing that's pretty neat about these is you can uh, easily remove the blocks. There's a holding bracket on the end of them. You just need to remove that. And then this holding bracket pops off, and now each one of these can be removed very simply and rearranged. And you can see in this particular one, I've arranged it red, black, red, black, red, black. They come um, arranged like this if you buy this little kit. I'll put a link in the description below. You can get all of these on Amazon. You can get them in any kind of color and configuration you want. And if you want something special, you can just let Clayton know through the uh, order form on Amazon the color or configuration that you want, and they'll take care of it for you. So overall, I'm really impressed with how these perform. All right, after that analysis, I'm going to go with the DK6N, which is good for up to 8 gauge wire. Now, I do have a number six ground wire, but I think I'm gonna put that on a, uh, on a ground bus bar if I break it. So this will give me margin. Now this one can handle 10 gauge wire and that's the largest size I have, but um, Clayton's recommendation is to go one size up and, and really you can put a lot more force on these screws than on these ones. So um, we're gonna go with the DK6 end. Let's put it in the box and put it together. This is the box I picked up on Amazon. It had pretty decent reviews. We'll see after some time. I'll let you know how well it actually performs. I'll put a link for all of these things in the description below. The Amazon links in my description are affiliate links. So if you use them when you make a purchase through Amazon, it's no extra cost to you, but it makes a small contribution to my channel. Now it comes with some glands. However, we have more wires than this, so I had to pick up a package of extra glands. Now, there's lots of options on Amazon. I'll link to this and you can find something that works for you. But it's nice to have an assortment for different projects. Now, the reason I used this box is it has a mounting board on the back. So I can just put my DIN rail on the back surface there and mount it and everything will be really easy. There we go. These are already on the system, but now I can see that they'll slide right in. We got our ground and then our positive and negative for string one and string two, and then space to add additional strings later on. Install our DIN rail. I wanna put that at a little bit of an angle just to make space. All right, let's put some labels on there so we'll know which, which string and which line we're connecting. In this case, I could put uh, line one and line two stickers on the outbound and string one, string two labels on the inbound. But 
in my case, I'm just bringing string one in and string one out, string two in and string two out, so that's how I'll label it. Screwed all four screws in, ready to mount it. All right, I've got my new box assembled. It's time to take this one apart and wire up the new one. Let's get it done. I shut the power off at the inverter. I'll open this up and just double check the voltages, but we should have a safe voltage to work with. The optimizers shut down each panel to one volt per panel. So that'll also help us identify which string is which. 15 volts, but these came right out. All right, as tight as these wire nuts are. This one seems okay. All right, we've got to separate it. I just got to pull these wires out and put the new box on. Put the uh, nut and the little rubber sleeve on the wire first. There we go, all the PV wires are installed. Now I just need to connect the uh, 10 gauge wire that runs to the inverter on the underside, but I'm gonna coil some of this wire up in here so that I don't lose my extra length in case I reposition this later. Okay, there we go, we have everything organized. A little extra slack for the wires coming from the house. In case I need to relocate, I just wrap those in a circle and came back in the bottom. My strings are labeled now, so I know which ones they are and I can check voltages right off those screws on the top without endangering touching something that I shouldn't. And they are in there securely as I demonstrated back in the shop. So the one thing I think I would have done differently is get a little bigger box. I, <laughs> I'm always trying to optimize things and it wouldn't have hurt to have a little bit more room to work. So otherwise, it turned out great. Now we just need to put the lid on and power it back up. I put my labels back on there and get my ground connected and we'll fire it up. There it went. 670 watts. Cloudy this morning, but Looks like we're all good to go. All right, it's all done. Everything's put back together. I wasn't that concerned about my wire nuts until you guys left some comments below on how dangerous that could be. And after taking them apart and using this new international connector system, I feel a lot better about it. So thanks for leaving that information below. If there's a box that you like to use, I'd really like to hear about it in the comments below. This particular one isn't UL listed. So if you're getting your system inspected, you're gonna want a UL listed box like this one, which is way more robust than this box. I didn't use this one originally because I wanted to try this out. It had the grid in the back to mount my connector to, and my previous UL listed box failed. But this one is an upgrade from that. It's a lot more robust. The lid is way stronger, so I think this will probably work for you. If you've got a better idea, I'd love to hear about it below. Be sure and hit the like and subscribe button. I have a lot of new content coming. A 60 kilowatt solar array that a friend of mine's putting in. I'll give you some highlights of that. The results of my west facing array, that's coming up. And also I'm putting in a wood stove and a new railing. So I'll bring some of that content to you as well. And I'll see you next time.